Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over questionable or usually bad advice provided in places like LinkedIn, X or different blogs and we try to fix it and turn it into good advice and learn from it. Now in this video I have a very very interesting one because not only is it wrong on the thing it's trying to prove but it also shows how you can have terrible terrible benchmarks so you don't really understand how to measure the performance of something and also it shows complete lack of understanding of how iEnumerable works which many many developers in C Sharp have. And the post is this one, it's coming from LinkedIn again and again, the author is anonymized because this is not about the author, it's about the advice itself we're trying to learn here. And as a side note, since this series was launched we see way less bad advice on LinkedIn which is very encouraging. And by the way, I started posting posts like this as well because I do think that they are an avenue to start learning more about a topic if they're done well. In fact, I even started a newsletter blog. So if you want to subscribe to that, check the link in the description. It's one blog every week. So if you're more of a reading person than a video person, you can find that down in the description. So the advice is convert all, avoid this method. Now, many people don't even know convert all exists because it's a very, very old method and it's kind of shadowed by modern day link. But in case you don't know, convert all is a method that exists for arrays and lists and it allows you to pass a converter, as you can see over here, to turn it from one type of thing to another. It's very much a mapper in essence. You have a T origin and a T destination, and then you have a method that shows you how do I convert from one to another, which might sound very similar to how you can do similar mapping using the select extension method in link. Now the select method is on I enumerable, the convert all method is on arrays and lists. And at the very bottom, we see what many creators try to do, which is prove their point using benchmark, which by the way, I do as well, but those benchmarks are only as good as your ability to write them well. Now, I want to see the text as well from this person because I always want to put as much context as their blog has or as their post has so we don't misjudge them. So usually collection specific methods are faster than I enumerable equivalents, but not with convert all. Convert all is a method provided by list and array. It converts each element in a list uh, to another type and returns a new list. Converter is a delegate that converts an object to the target type. So converter is a delegate. You can have sort of a lambda type uh, syntax as well if you want to. And then unfortunately, unlike some other methods optimized for specific collections, convert all is less performant. We'll see about that. Using select dot to list is not only more performant, but also more versatile since it works with all enumerable of type T. Share your thoughts, subscribe and whatever. Now the problem with this post, except for it being completely wrong, is that there is no code provided. So I'm trying to recreate these examples from the code I see here. And I actually think I got really close. So what I have here is this benchmark class and what I do is I create 10,000 random orders using a, a consistent seed. So all the randomized strings are created deterministically. So they're the exact same size. And then I'm two listing it. So I'm storing it as a list in the beginning of the benchmarks. Then I have the same convert order method as the person has on the blog. And then I have the get order basic infos which converts all the items from one to another and I am using the new converter as they do. Now, I can actually say just remove that because it's a redundant delegate thing, uh, but the compiler is actually able to optimize that anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to try to recreate the exact same thing as they did. Now, you might notice over here that I have a benchmark that returns an I enumerable. You can't really do that. If I actually try to go ahead and run this benchmark, so benchmark runner and then run the terrible, terrible benchmarks, then what benchmark.net will tell me is you can't run something that returns an I enumerable because an I enumerable indicates deferred execution. It means that the thing isn't actually materialized. It's not a view. It's not a materialized result until it is invoked as something else, until it is needed by something that can enumerate it. A to list, a for each loop, any of those things can materialize it. And one example of those, by the way, in case you don't know, is using the consume method, which means you can have a consumer that you store at the top of your class, and then that consumer is consuming the enumerable, and then you prove your point. And that's why you never, never, never return an enumerable in a benchmark, because 
it doesn't test anything. It just tests the ability of the thing to create a deferred execution lazy invocation that is actually never invoked. Never do that. The closest I could get to the person's numbers is by turning this into a void and then just saying enumerable equals and then pointing to the select. And if I do that and I run my benchmarks, then let's take a look at what I have. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just released two brand new courses on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Git and From Zero to Hero GitHub Actions. And they're two amazing courses authored by Scott Sober, who's extremely experienced in both topics. Now, you might think you know those topics, but trust me, the way Scott teaches them and the way he has dedicated sections on how to deal with things going wrong on each topic is extremely, extremely valuable. As I was reviewing it, I learned so much myself. Now, to celebrate the launch, the first 200 of you can use discount code GIT30 at checkout to get 30% off. Now, back to the video. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So, as you can see, 72 microseconds for convert all, 60 for select two lists. So, clearly, we have a quite significant difference. Not much in memory, pretty much the same. But the whole point of select not being an indicative thing of how this should perform is here because that's the same sort of insane discrepancy. This is microseconds and this is nanoseconds. So we kind of recreate it. No, it is not 4,252 times faster. That's insane. How do you even say that? It is actually a terrible, terrible benchmark. Please never do this. The select to list is more indicative, but this is actually a bad benchmark to begin with. This is not an optimized benchmark to prove what's going on here. And I'll explain why. First, let's delete this enumerable thing. It's terrible. It doesn't make any sense. Then let's take a look at why the convert all method is slower. Let's go in the source code itself and see how it's implemented. So it accepts a converter of type whatever to type output. And if we take a look at the converter object, it is, as you can see over here, a delegate where you have your T input and your T output, which if you have a delegate, it means you can actually pass your own Lambda in it. Then it has a null check, should be pretty efficient. Then we have a new list created out of this list using the size of the existing list, which is interesting because at the end of the loop that is setting each item, we also set the size again. Like, shouldn't this size be already set here? I, I'm not quite sure why this is the case. I'm sure there's a reason, but to me, this looks pretty weird. But all this method is doing is there's a for loop in here, and then it's using the internal items array that every list is backed from, and it's using the delegate, it invokes it, and then that applies whatever is happening. So you just use the backing array, and that's what should make it pretty efficient. But it doesn't. Well, let me show you something. If I take the method directly. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to remove any unnecessary potential jumps. So if I just use the method directly like a normal person would do, not like a person that would write a benchmark for LinkedIn, and I remove the new here, and I turn this into a direct invocation because I can pass a lambda. So I can say new order basic, and then I can say status is status dot status. This will return a list, the exact same thing, right? So if I now go and I run my benchmark, let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, convert all is more memory efficient and it performs slightly better than select to list. As in my opinion, it should. I think those results are within margin of error. You should see sort of the two perform around the same, but that's the actual real performance that you can get from convert all if you write your code correctly. So first, never just base your results based on unenumerable because that is just a lazy deferred execution thing. It doesn't really return anything until you say, please return it. It's a very weird, uncommon thing that I've actually never seen used in code. And ultimately, it's very rare to see it used because it's only on lists and arrays. And usually you use link on enumerables for consistency. The difference won't be anything you ever notice. I think don't use convert all. It doesn't make any sense. Just use select and then cast whatever you want or materialize into whatever you want. But don't think that enumerable is just 4,000 times faster than the other thing. And don't think that convert all is terrible. If it was terrible, it would have been optimized. Microsoft is looking at those things. I'd be very surprised if they don't try to optimize this version as well.
but no one not from you what is some weird list array extension method that you know and maybe you use and you think it deserves more attention leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding